The Crafting DM. What's up, Earthlings? In this video, I'm going to walk you through how I made this Power Relay Station Terrain Scatter. It's primarily cast from dental stone plaster and from plastic packaging that I used to form makeshift molds. Specifically in this project, I used a plastic container from some cheese and a packaging from a toy car and a Listerine flosser. I also used some other bits here and there that I pulled from the recycling bin or my crafting supply stash. This project cost pennies to build. Look, you don't need a fancy hot wire cutting table or to download any elaborate pans to complete this build. All you need are some random bits of packaging, a splash of paint, and your own creativity. The idea for this project was born out of some discarded plastic, really. In fact, when I began, I wasn't really sure what I was making or how it would turn out. I just thought that casting and utilizing the plastic packaging as molds for stone casting could result in some pretty interesting shapes. So first step, I mixed and poured some plaster. In this project, I used white type 4 dental stone from the plaster guys. There's a no endorsement here, I just have the best results when I use that specific casting material. It casts well, it dries strong and durable, and it holds paint very well. You can see that these shapes came out well. There's no bubbling in the final product and they held up well during removal from the plastic molds. The only commercial mold used during this project was Herstart's mold number 43, the Gothic panel accessories. I used this mold because I believe the columns would make great industrial looking pipes. But I want to emphasize that I used this mold only because I have it on hand and it was convenient for this purpose. But the pipes could have just as easily been crafted with black plastic coffee stirrer straws or anything similar. Once the pieces were fully dry, and after messing with some various arrangements, I began gluing the dental stone cast together using Aileen's Tacky Glue. Again, there is no endorsement here. I just find that this glue is one of the best for securing plaster in place. It bonds well and holds strong, and I never have a problem with the pieces coming apart later on down the road. Next, to build the tower portion of this build, I used the plastic container from a Warheads Extreme Sour Minis Hard Candy Box. First, I cut the label off, and then I took a hard bristled brush and gave the outside a good scratching so that the paint would adhere properly. After it was primed for painting, I went ahead and spray painted this piece black. Given its plastic composition, brushing black apple barrel paint onto this piece of material would be pretty difficult. After it dried, I glued it onto the base. Next, I dug through my bin of random crafting materials until I found two pieces of plastic that I thought might fit this build. The first is a component from a mechanical whiteout dispenser. The second is just some bit of black plastic that I picked up from the road somewhere. After selecting which pieces I wanted to use in the project, I glued them in place. After it was all glued together, I applied a base layer of Apple Barrel's black paint. If you've watched any of my other videos, or checked me out on Instagram, you'll see that I use Apple Barrel's black for just about all of my terrain projects. It coats well and layers evenly. I wanted to create a noticeable difference for the concrete portion of the base. First I painted it with some slate gray. Then I added some concrete texture to bring it to life. Next, I added some metallic paint colors. I started with brushed bronze for the pipes. I wanted them to stand out a bit. I also had plans to add some Citadel's oxidation effects, which you'll see later in the video, and I figured the bronze would blend nicely. Next, I added some brushed dark gray to the entire metallic portion of the project. This included the machinery boxes on the bottom, as well as the array piece on the top. Once it was finished, I was pretty happy with the way it turned out. I thought the metallic pieces stood out nicely, and I thought the detailing in the dented and disturbed portions really came out well. Next, I turned my attention to the grating on the bottom. I added some brushed silver metallic paint to start. To apply this paint, I'm using Royal & Langnickel's 237A Zen brush. I really like this brush. It works perfectly for dry brushing and getting in some fine detail. As you can see in the video, my brush is pretty worn out, so I use it a lot. After those layers had dried, I mixed together some mossy meadow and brushed pearl gold to create a greenish, worn, tarnished look. I applied this color to all of the machinery boxes on the bottom and the array tower. I was casual with the brush strokes because I wanted to have a metallic grain look as well as some scratching and wear and tear. Next, I added some Citadel's technical Nihalakalakalakalaka oxide 
aka the oxide effect, that I had mentioned previously. I brushed this all into the metallic pipes on the bottom. After touching up the pipes with some more brushed bronze, I splattered some Citadel's Athonian camo shade across the entire project. I really love this color. It really brings a lot of projects to life and gives them a lot of detail, especially when you're going for a grimy, aged look. After it had dried, I added some Folk Arts Painted Finishes Rust Color to create some rust effects across the project. I wanted to go ahead and add some more detail to the tower portion of the build, so I dug through my crafting bin and found a piece of screen that I had picked up on the sidewalk somewhere. After I had measured and cut the screen, I used some 3M spray multi-purpose adhesive to adhere it to the tower. This spray adhesive works great. It dries well and bonds strong. At this point, I was pretty happy with the way the project was turning out, but I thought it lacked some detail. I thought there were probably too many smooth surfaces, and I wanted to see more mechanical parts. So, diving back into my crafting bin, I found another piece from the whiteout dispenser, as well as a metal cuff link. After spray painting the black, I went ahead and glued these pieces onto the project. Then I grabbed some of the metallic paint that I had previously used, and brought them up to speed so that they would be blended nicely with the overall piece. Finally, I covered the entire project in a homemade black wash. This is a pretty basic wash made from distilled water, acrylic ink, and a couple drops of jet dry. And that's all. In the end, I thought it turned out pretty well. A nice piece of industrial scatter terrain that would blend pretty well with any sci-fi game that you might play. Again, this was made dirt cheap out of plaster and paint and some discarded plastic that I had from my recycling bin. If you like these kind of videos, please go ahead and like and subscribe. I appreciate you watching. Thanks, and see you next time.